Howdy y'all, Dean Stiller here from the official home of unofficial Grateful Dead and Music News, Port on Dead and Company, the final tour. Uh, so we're here in uh, beautiful San Francisco. We're having a, a time of it here. I absolutely love it. Uh, the hotel's great, overlooking the Bay Area here. This is uh, this is a special time. Uh, co my co-host uh, on this review, Anthony Shalaba, he's the fucking boss. Uh, he, he's got a hat that lets you know about it. As, uh, he's here with us. He's killing it. My roommate, I don't like roommates much, but uh, as, uh, typically travel, fly, those who travel the furthest and fastest much, must travel alone. Uh, those of us who have traveled far and fast know that. A anyway, uh, so Anthony's with us. You got anything you want to say, Anthony? Uh, I just want to say, you know, if you don't come with flowers in your hair, you get your bougie hat like this uh, uh, from Brian Levine. Uh, this is a one of a kind. So uh, thanks, Brian, for uh, for hooking me up. But absolutely another glorious day here and uh, running with this guy, uh, bookending uh, the whole Denton Company run has just been uh, spectacular, and uh, we're making memories. And y'all. Who aren't here, you're still here. As, uh, as, uh, he's the bougie boss here with his lid. Uh, uh, w we get to the venue uh, last night, and uh, naturally going to be uh, uh, filled with love and excitement, and as, uh, everybody anticipation. Uh, anticipation off the charts. Figuring this is going to be a very special three nights here to end this thing. Uh, that's had an amazing life that we've gotten to share so much of. So as uh, so everyone plays the guessing game, what are they going to start with? They start with not fade away. That's just fine. Was, got off to a good start. I thought it sounded good. The sound in the venue was very good. Uh, the venue, beautiful ballpark. I've been watching it on TV for a long time, watching the Giants games and stuff like that, and, and always wanted to get here. So I was uh, grateful to be part of it. Loved just being in the ballpark. And... Uh, it's a beautiful place, perfect weather. I mean, it's, it's everything you could ask for. We're all there gathered and, and not fade away. So we're filled up with love to get this thing started. Not fade away turns to shakedown. And uh, a shake, I think we're. It's a, it's a good start. Everything sounds good. Things sound good. Everybody's looking very happy. It seems like the pace is okay and uh, things are going to move along. We get shaked down. We move it into cold rain and snow. Uh, another good tune on these guys. We're not really going too far from our comfort zone to get things started here. Uh, some good moments in all these songs. Uh, Ramble on Rose up next, and uh, that's just fine, I guess. Uh, brown eyed women, you know, that's always good on these guys, so that's a hoedown, and we're all dancing our asses off for that. Uh, things are moving along pretty good. I guess everybody needs a breather. We get the breather on uh, New Speedway. New Speedway, he here was my observation with songs like New Speedway is uh, there's songs for me with this band. This is just my two cents. I said, uh, listen, it doesn't have to be everyone's two cents, but it's mine. It's, the first half of that dragged, I shaved twice. Uh, uh, waiting for that song to get done, but but it, it, as as much as it dragged the first half, they made it very interesting when they finished it. So it, even tunes that for me sometimes drag a little bit, they're always finding spots to make very interesting moments. And I thought that was New Speedway. The end of it, O'Teal took over. He he drove that thing hard to the finish line and it, it became very interesting at the end of that. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in on that um, New Speedway. So I think there was a, a, a memorial to uh, Sam Cutler as well. As uh, many of you might know, New Speedway Boogie, the origin of, uh, the origin of that song is around the Altamat uh, debacle. Altamont, uh, where the Stones played that free show, and Sam Cutler was in the thick of that. Kind of lost his job over that, as a matter of fact. Oh. But uh, sadly, uh, we lost Uncle Sam uh, earlier this week on Tuesday. Uh, may he rest in peace. Sam Cutler was a force uh, in the uh, in the music uh, music industry, the music history. The only guy who ever uh, was a tour manager for both the Stones and the Grateful Dead. So uh, I think uh, they dropped in New Speedway um, with an ode to, uh, to Sam's passing. That's a, that's that's a good point. That's that. a fair point. That's a fair point. Uh, a great guy, Sam Cutler. It was very funny because we were connected on getting Sam Cutler a ticket for the first Dead & Company shows, uh, their second show, uh, Halloween in 2015, right, in yep. Madison Square Garden. Anthony calls me and says, uh, is there any way you can get a ticket for Sam Cutler, and I thought, How why Sam the Cutler? fuck are you calling me to get him a ticket? I'm a nobody, he's a everybody. So, so anyway, we worked together and ended up getting Sam Cutler a ticket for a, a, that Halloween show, and he was on Tales from the Golden Road a, a couple nights later. So that was the first 
ticket that he ever had possession of to get to a show. All the other shows he'd done in his time, he was either taken care of, comped, or he was putting on the shows. Right. So it was very funny that that's the first ticket that he ever had for a show, and we worked together to get that to him. And we miracled him. Yeah, that, 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 was, that, was a, that was an outstanding memory. Yet, so it was great spending the show with him, and uh, but the stories went on forever. He was a wonderful guy, but easy to talk to, fun. Uh, that was a great time. So there we go. From there we get Warfrat. I, I know Warfrat for me, I'm never going to be crazy about Warfrat. Something I noticed they did, uh, they, they turned everyone's volume down on the harmonies, I think, which made it abundantly better having everybody turn down a little bit. It could have been my imagination, but it seemed like when it came to those parts... Kind of everyone's vocals were turned down a little bit. I think it helped. Not not a huge fan uh, of Wharf Rat with this crew. As, uh, and Anthony, he, he was in our conversation. He was explaining why. So as, I'll open that up to you on that. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, I just love a good Wharf Rat. But, you know, uh, uh, the placement was a little odd to me, to be honest. Um, first set, first night. Of the uh, of the runs, tough tough spot to contemplate life. A little early in the run to contemplate <laughs> life and changing your ways and getting up and flying away and yeah. do, I should be living differently and like oh my, can we just do this on Sunday? But uh, we'll, we'll take what we can get and uh, you know I know that girl's been true to me and that's a shout out to uh, uh, to Robin von Helens, my uh, my lady, my better half that uh, passed earlier this year and you know I was just waterworks right there in the first set contemplating life and. and was just a uh, you know, great song, but rough placement for me. It's a, it's a, I agree with you 100%. It's a, don't make me contemplate my future and my life and getting on with things on night one. It, it's too early for me to feel that kind of regret. Uh, I'll, I'll work, deal with that later in life. No, please, not tonight. A, a, anyway, that's okay. Donies followed, and Donies was a great way to make us uh, all get back to smiling and, uh, and having a hoedown. We were having a good time. There was a great way to close what I thought was an okay first set. Is that I, it was it was good. It was uh, everything was played okay and uh, nothing blew my mind really. But it was all a lot of fun. We get the second set started to get a China Rider. Always going to be a good time with China Rider. Uh, there was like a different vibration to me in the you, you know you get the start you get a China Rider and a Scarlet Fire both in this set. Uh, so to me, it's, uh, this is uh, three nights. So you got some of the biggies. Uh, in one half of the set, some of the biggies are gone. So uh, they kind of, the, the way they kind of came across to me was a little bit different, a little unique. As the sounds happening were a little unique, the pace and the vibe of it was a little unique. But I thought everything well played. What was funny, the China Rider, I absolutely uh, love that. We're having a blast. They go to He's Gone, and He's Gone, a good song. I figure now's a great time. I'm going to break. I'm going to dance my way to the bathroom. Uh, for He's Gone, I could still hear it. I, I kind of regretted doing that because as I'm dancing, the bathroom was far. If you were on the floor, especially on uh, <coughs> excuse me, especially on the, the O'Teal side of the floor, the trip to the bathroom, you had to walk through hallways outside the stadium all the way to the other side. It was quite a walk getting to the bathroom. And, and uh, while I'm going there, I'm hearing Mayor just absolutely shred this He's Gone. I mean, he was killing it. And, uh, and then I was waiting online in the bathroom and watching on the screen you can hear it from backstage and uh, embellish that the living daylights out of he's got i thought it sounded great uh so, so there we go i uh, maybe a poor choice not necessarily a piss break song but you gotta go you gotta go yeah. so there's nothing you can do as we get older we can't hold it as good as we used to yeah, well, it's you like can you can you held it the whole show. Yeah, it was didn't pee amazing. once. Anthony Shalaba gets an award for being a geezer leaguer that didn't pee once during the entire show. I, I Austin Powers it hard at, at the end of the show, but uh, yeah, it was like an Uber ride a candlestick to get to the bathroom. <laughs> it really was. It was tough stuff. So after he's gone, you get Scarlet Fire. Always going to be a great time. Uh, it's a little bit of a hiccup there between Scarlet and Fire. It's just, you wondered, are we going to get something else? Are they going to save fire maybe for after drums and space? And after a little bit of hesitation that you get the fire. O'Teal always great on that. He, he was outstanding all night. Him, commits everybody. May are just absolutely killing everything all night long. This was a band that was in fine form, having a great time. It, it's a little more electric, and it's going to always come across a little better when you're there because you're, you're in the soup there. You're all filled up with loves all around you. 
and it's gonna be hard not to have a good time. Uh, you get drums in space, which was great. You get one, listen, intermission, I missed one of the highlights of my night. Got to meet Blair Jackson. Love you, Blair, and his lovely wife. Uh, great to meet him. Been waiting to meet him for a little bit, so it was great to meet you there at intermission. You just wanted to make mention of that. So Scarlet Fire, we got drums in space next. At this point, some point during this China Rider thing, when I made the break for the bathroom, part of it, I had to get off the floor. The floor was just a mashup. Things were getting very tight down there. I needed room to move. I felt suffocated. I had to free myself. So I spent the rest of the show uh, just kind of wandering on the back of the floor. Tons of room. Sound was great throughout the entire venue. Really good. Uh, they come out of space. And, and it was funny because I thought it was Cumberland out of space. And incredible the way there were Dark Star signatures all over it. And then what I noticed uh, is uh, on the Dead & Company set list, they said it was a Big River Dark Star jam. So that was the Dark River jam again. I thought it was Cumberland with the signatures of Dark Star all over it. The jam was unbelievable. And I'm like, we're probably going to get one of these. I don't know which one, but they're both sounding very good. And then we got nothing. Then we got neither. So it, it goes into standing on the moon. Um, I don't know. For me, I, I was excited to have a... I thought we were getting ready to get down uh, with Cumberland. It didn't happen. Uh, you go right into standing on the moon, which I guess was okay. Uh, did an okay job with that. Casey Joe, you want to say something about standing on the moon? I was just going like to say, a, yeah, another Waterworks song for me personally. Um, but... Uh, yeah, uh, again, Robin, may she rest in peace, lovely view of heaven. I'd much rather be with her, and I'd trade places with her in a heartbeat as well, but uh, she's, uh, she, she, was, uh, she was in the room for sure. Uh, but yeah, then you, then you just, you know, flash cut to Casey Jones is like, whee! Casey Jones is a fun time. That's always a fun time. And, you know, as you're hearing all these things, you're thinking, is this very well... Uh, maybe the last time you hear this stuff from this group of guys. So every song was kind of, that was something that was somewhere in my mind that uh, this could very well be the last time we hear a lot of these songs from this group of players. So you're kind of taking it in a little bit deeper, a little bit extra, paying more attention to each note that gets played. Uh, and the Casey Jones, it was, a, it was a fun way to close things out. Uh, They're you, just showing off now. You get to, well, you know, you really ought to show off. Right. I think it's at this it all point, on the field. you need to show off more. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, they need to show off more. I, and I'm sure they will. This is going to be uh, great. We got two of them left. Uh, knocking the encore is knocking, and uh, that's just fine. I know it's Anthony. He highly emotional night for him. He's uh, tied emotionally to so many of these things. Uh, so knocking, he, he, uh, I heard him in conversation with someone thought it was the best thing that ever happened in the universe. So, so I'm not sure I liked it as much as Anthony, but <laughs> so you get a knocking encore to send you home. So that wraps up night one. You thought the knocking was the best thing that ever happened in the universe. Well, I got to say the, the visual tribute was definitely an enhancement when they ran through uh, all the crew and the members of the band and. And been let off with Sam Cutler and obviously closed with Jerry and it was just like it was a wave of emotion across the whole entire stadium and uh, you know we were all in the moment and just digging it and it was the best knocking ever. Is that, there you go, best one ever. Is that, you got to love the video tributes and stuff like that. The uh, nods to all the folks that have uh, come through our little sphere of uh, of influence and entertainment across the years and uh, celebrating it here in San Francisco. We're blessed to be part of it. We look forward to being uh, more of it. We got two more nights coming. We'll be reporting here from sunny San Francisco. So uh, that's it for night one. Night, I, I got to say a huge props to Andy out there. Andy hooking me up with tickets. Andy, he, he, he's been watching the reviews for a long time. Hook me up with tickets for uh, last night and for Sunday as well. I love you forever, bro. That's a strong move and I appreciate you. So a uh, big major props to Andy on that. Is Tony hooking me up for tonight. So I'm living the dream here <laughs> with my pal and everybody. It was great to see so many of y'all. Y'all were kind and friendly and gracious as could be to me. Uh, good to see so many folks that I, I love and appreciate. So we'll catch you after the next one. We'll see you at the venue tonight. We love you forever. Can we get a hug? Oh, we get a hug. <laughs> hug it out. <laughs> hug it we're out. putting that into the universe. Love you forever. Love y'all.